Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I've found in my travels. Today, I don't want to talk about fiction. Rather, I want to talk about nonfiction, uh, something that I have not done previously, unless you count um, uh, that thing about Albert Camus that I did a while back. Uh, but I, I don't count that. Uh, so yeah, I want to talk about a book that focuses on the death of the universe. I am referring to The End of Everything, Astrophysically Speaking, by Katie Mack. For those that don't know, Katie Mack is a uh, cosmologist. Uh, that's the term that she prefers. Uh, a, um, she studies, you know, space and the stars. Her specialties are the reionization period of the Big Bang, which is like a specific time period uh, during which, you know, stuff was happening at the formation of the universe. Um, but she also focuses on vacuum decay and, and other such things, uh, focusing on, on the end of the universe. Uh, two, uh, two periods on the opposite end of the time scale, the very beginning, and presumably the very end, although um, there's a number of questions about whether it truly is the end. Uh, so yeah, she, um, she's one, or she's spoken, you know, done a lot of presentations about, uh, about her field of work. Uh, she's active on Twitter. I follow her. Um, and she, she always presents, um, uh, science in a very popular kind of way, a very, um, uh, you know, uh, dumbed down, uh, dumbed down, like it's, it's, it's audience friendly, essentially, you know, she, uh, she, she knows that not everybody is, is, has a, like a PhD like she does in, in this stuff. So she's, she presents in a way that everyone can understand, much like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, although Neil doesn't really talk about, uh, you know, the work of others uh, a lot. He's much more interested in, you know, being a, a contrarian at times. Uh, but Katie Mack, her work is very interesting. And like, it's it's right down my alley because I love thinking about the end of the universe, how, it, how it's all going to end. Much like I like, I, I like thinking about the beginning of the universe. So uh, this book was definitely a, a must read for me because of that. Um, uh, also, it's, it's gotten a lot of uh, like uh, good reviews, so I, I wanted to uh, check it out there. Uh, so yeah, Katie Mack is a pretty interesting person and she knows her stuff. So uh, given this is the first nonfiction book um, that I've read, you know, I'll do a little analysis with this book, but uh, it's not going to be deep themes or anything like that. So without further ado, I will do a summary of this book, sort of a general summary. I'm not going to spoil too much in case you want to check this book out yourself. Uh, and then I will do um, an analysis again, uh, and we'll move on from there. The end of everything, astrophysically speaking, uh, begins with Katie Mack discussing uh, how we can see into the past by looking at stars, uh, given that, um, you know, the stars are... are billions of years old uh, be, uh, because they're uh, the way light travels to us we're actually seeing into the past or as uh, she says maybe we're seeing into the future or we're seeing in, into the present we don't we don't really know at this at this time but uh, we're, we're uh, uh, by looking at the stars um, we can see into the distant past including the Big Bang especially by looking at microwave radiation um, and all the things like that uh, so she she goes in to talk about the Big Bang, how there were specific periods of the Big Bang, a singularity, uh, the early universe with uh, with uh, first like just basic building blocks like protons, new, neutrons, stuff like that, slowly moving up towards electrons, and then um, as it, as it widened, we got space dust and all, all all kinds of good elements that eventually led to the formation of galaxies and stars. And, and then, you know, the planets, uh, and then our solar system. So uh, it, it's necessary to go into the Big Bang so you can understand, like, how it's going to end. She also talks about uh, the Big Crunch, one possible way that the, uh, the universe can end, where uh, it, it seems like the uh, universe, is, the, uh, the expansion of the universe is slowing down. And so the number of galaxies that, uh, that form or the, uh, 
the number of you know star systems that form will eventually lead to a very crowded universe and the universe might eventually you know recede to a point where it's um, it, everything just crunches together and maybe at that point another universe will form or it'll be just the the finality of everything. Uh, there's a lot of questions about the cyclical nature of the universe uh, that uh, Katie Mack goes into more detail with this. She also talks about the heat death of the universe, the idea that uh, because the universe is constantly expanding, it'll eventually reach a point where uh, space stuff can't be recycled anymore. Uh, like dying stars will just die and, and they, uh, none of their material can be reused to form new stars or anything like that. Uh, eventually bl black holes will form but they'll evaporate because there's nothing left and the entropy in the universe will be such that uh expansion can be no longer be possible after a certain point and so everything will just stop however interestingly katie mack notes that um uh there, there are periods in this entropy where something new can pop into existence uh but because of the the way entropy is uh it's only for a short period of time but in that short period of time an entirely new universe can form just a new universe forming in an already uh, like infinitely expanded universe um, another possible idea is Boltzmann brains, which is the idea that instead of creating another universe, it just creates a, uh, like a small consciousness, uh, where, you know, perhaps you, and it's perhaps your memory of last Tuesday. And so you're, you're constantly reliving that memory of last Tuesday. It's something that Nietzsche called the, uh, the eternal re recurrence. Uh, so, so rather than, you know, creating uh, another universe, it just creates a, um, a brain that's imagining a universe uh, very very complex and that, that could be happening to us right now but we we wouldn't know it's it's a very um, odd thing and I encourage you to read this book to find out more about it because I'm, I'm probably not doing it justice Katie Mack also talks about the big rip uh, which is the idea that dark energy will tear the fabric of the universe apart uh, destroying everything from massive galaxies to our own planet to us uh, that uh, like even if we were, were not on earth like like the atoms within us would be torn apart and like the big rip would result in everything dying. And then she also goes into uh, vacuum decay, which relies on the on the Higgs field. And the Higgs field is just this thing where like uh, it's the basic principles of all of the universe. Uh, gravity, you know, uh, f uh, friction, all, all kinds of things like that. Uh, and so we think we know what the Higgs field is. But it's possible that uh, uh, she, uh, that uh, the Higgs field hasn't settled into its final state, into the actual rules of the universe, uh, of what they're going to be. Uh, she equates this to like a ball rolling down a hill and getting stuck in a crevice, and then eventually getting shaken loose and hitting like the ground below, and that's the actual um, uh, rules of the universe rather than where we're currently at. And what that would result in is like, um, at some point, like a black hole could explode with enough force that it would, uh, it would result in a new set of rules. And so this, this would create a bubble that expands outward, destroying everything in its path. And, uh, the, a new universe could form in the, in the center of this bubble, but more realistically, um, everything would decay inside the bubble as well. And, uh, that would just be the end of the universe. Um, it, what's interesting about uh, that is that we wouldn't see vacuum decay happening until it's too late. Uh, everything would just completely fall apart. Uh, but it's, um, it's, it's also unlikely to happen because um, it seems like the Higgs field where the rules of the universe are pretty, pretty set. But there's still the possibility that maybe they aren't. And so again, I encourage you to read this because I'm probably not doing it justice. I'm not, uh, I'm not a, um, uh, you know, a cosmologist like, like Katie Mack. So um, I'm, I, I don't have the background to explain this as well as she does. And then she also talks about balance and it sort of relies on multiverse theory where it says that uh, uh, at one point two universes were created uh, and because because gravity is leaking out of one universe into another, they're they're uh, they're being pulled together, and eventually they'll hit each other, uh, and that'll cause you know the, the destruction of the universe, and presumably also the beginning of a new one. Again, she's 
she's uh, talking about uh, cyclical nature um, of, of universes. Uh, so uh, maybe that's how things go. Uh, maybe there's just an entire multiverse of universes crashing into one another and creating new universes in the process. Uh, this is this is one of the areas that's more more new and uh, needs more uh, research to be done before we can you know properly say whether or not this is likely to occur or not. And the last thing that Katie Mack talks about is how new technology and theories are currently being developed that help us better understand the universe, both the beginning and the end of it. Uh, but at the same time, they also confuse us because they put existing theories into question. Uh, and they also put like the laws of the universe into question. We think we know how the universe functions, but we're constantly learning that there's new elements to it that maybe we didn't know about before or something like that. In terms of analysis, there's a bit to talk about here. Uh, one thing that constantly comes up in this book is the idea of what we know versus what we don't know. Uh, because since you know the the early 1900s, uh, uh, we've constantly been been learning new things about the universe, how it functions, uh, how the elements within it function, such as gravity, such as you know star systems and, and whatnot. Uh, I, we're we're constantly forming new hypotheses and new theories. Uh, we're we're discovering new things with the use of um, telescopes and and other such uh, technologies, uh, and and so we're really coming to understand a lot about the universe, um, also where we came from, where the universe came from, and where we're going, where the universe is going as well. Uh, but uh, this is also revealing a lot about what we don't know about the universe. How uh, every new theory that that is proposed or every new discovery calls into question like a hundred other things that uh, that were previously known. Uh, we we thought we knew how gravity works, but it turns out you know it's still kind of a mystery, uh, especially given that it's it's possible that uh, gravity from our own universe could be leaking out into other universes. Um, and so this raises a number of questions and it, it confuses uh, astronomers because what we previously thought we knew is actually, you know, mysterious and, and uh, a mystery, uh, it's a mystery to us. So we're, uh, we're, uh, we're constantly reworking our understanding of the universe, creating entirely new particles of matter to to uh, that we then verify later on to justify, you know, how we think the universe works. Uh, so, uh, what we know about the universe today, astronomers might, you know, tomorrow realize, oh, that's not right. So, uh, something needs to be reworked here, uh, which, which I like. It, um, it, it certainly would be frustrating as an astronomer to constantly not really understand how the universe works, but because there's so much mystery, you can dive into that. And there's entire fields where there needs to be new information and there, there's a lot of, um, unsolved questions, uh, which, uh, I'm sure, like, like Katie Mack uh, points out, like she's thrilled about now she's constantly learning new information. Another interesting thing that Katie Mack touches upon is the idea of answers versus the, the process of how things work. Uh, I think she gets at the point that like, you know, astronomers would love to know all the answers. How did the universe form? How is it going to end? What's the deal with supernova? Uh, a lot of a lot of questions there, um, uh, but uh, I think what sci what the scientists truly want to understand is the process of how things work. How did gravity work in the early universe versus how it works now, and how it's going to work, a, you know, a billion years from now? Uh, what's the deal with the Higgs field? Uh, you know, how does that function uh, factor into what what we're seeing in the stars all around us? Uh, it's it, it's really it'd be really great to know the answer. But I, I think what scientists want more than that is just a basic understanding of uh, of the functions of the universe, um, a more finite understanding, so where they can say, "Oh, this is how X works, uh, and this is why it doesn't work in this case." Uh, we have a lot of questions that we don't know about that, and so I think by understanding um, these two different periods in time, maybe we can understand more about how these pro uh, processes work. Uh, it, it's it certainly raises you know a lot of questions uh, and and I like how uh, by by understanding you know these two things you know we're, we're coming to understand more about 
the basic functions of the universe. So it's sort of like uh, taking the long way around, but it's, it's possibly the only way you can do it given the limited technology we have at this time. The last thing I want to talk about is how Katie Mack touches upon legacy. At the very end of the book, she talks about how, uh, uh, you know, human beings have a tendency to want to preserve uh, their, their acts and like what they're doing and for the next generation. And those, those generations will want to preserve something for the next generation. Uh, but uh, given that the universe is ultimately finite um, or cyclical, we're not going to be continuing on to the next universe regardless. But uh, uh, because the universe eventually has an endpoint, it, call it calls into question our act of trying to preserve things. Uh, uh, what many of her scientist friends point out that it's uh, it's saddening, and it's, it also makes you realize that um, you know you can build great cathedrals in the sky, but uh, ultimately that's for naught because it, at the end of the universe it's going to be washed away. Um, there's a good quote that I would like to read to you. Even if you take the position that Reese's view is overly pessimistic, there has to come a point in any timeline with a fine line with a finite extent where our legacy as a species just stops. Whatever legacy-based rationalization we use to make peace with our own personal deaths, perhaps we leave behind children or great works, or somehow make the world a better place, none of that can survive the ultimate destruction of all things. At some point, in a cosmic sense, it will not have mattered that we have ever lived. The universe will, more likely than not, fade into a cold, dark, empty cosmos, and all that we've done now will be utterly forgotten. Where does that leave us? And so that's an interesting, you know, question. Uh, you know, is does it matter if we if what if we are passing down things to next generations, if uh, ultimately uh, none of that none of that is going to survive the death of the universe? Uh, it, it's it's certainly a fascinating question to consider. Um, but in my opinion, uh, yeah, we should absolutely be passing things down. Um, the, de the death of the universe isn't for billions of years, or maybe it might happen tomorrow with vacuum decay. We never really know, but we, we don't know when the end of the universe is coming and all the estimates point to billions of years in the future. Uh, humanity might not be around then, but, uh, humanity is around now. Uh, and given that we, we only live for 50 years at a time, it's still worth passing things down. Uh, uh, to see, to help our universe, to, or to help human beings uh, survive and, uh, you know, fix the issues of our current time period and to, you know, pass down the learnings from one generation to another. Uh, we have more immediate problems right now than the death of the universe uh, that we need to solve uh, so that future generations can thrive as well. Uh, Katie Mack's colleagues also point out that maybe it's not the destination that matters so much, it's, it's more about the journey, which is, uh, you know, very deep and philosophical. Uh, so, yeah, she's, uh, like, the, ultimately the universe destroys all things, but we're in the here and now, we're like in the present moment, uh, so we should really be focusing on that more so than the end of the universe. Uh, at least that's what I think. Uh, th there are pressing matters now that we can, we can solve. Solved. And you know, maybe if we're still around in billions of years, we can we can have this conversation again. But you know, I don't think that's uh, that's really too important. Uh, so yeah, something to worth something worth thinking about there. And so that was the end of everything astrophysically speaking by Katie Mack. A wonderful book, um, a wonderful nonfiction uh, that I definitely recommend it, that you go out and read if you can find it. Um, it's it's uh, it's on Amazon, it's pretty cheap, uh, your local library might have it, uh, and it's it's uh, it's worth seeking out because you're you're always willing to learn something and I particularly like it because you know it's it's about the the universe and the end of it which is um, you know one of my favorite topics to, to talk about. Uh, I, I really like how Katie Mack, you know, makes this accessible to everybody, uh, not just, you know, the, the hardened scientists, but there are definitely points where, where it passed right over me because, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a PhD. Uh, so that might be the only issue with, um, with this story, but yeah, I, I definitely can't recommend it enough. Don't forget to comment below, uh, if you have something to say, um, if you read this before or you want to simply, you know, comment on my review, let's have a discussion about this great book. Uh, otherwise, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about Katie Mack. And in the meantime, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and uh, ultimately doomed travels. Farewell.